Right. Okay. Okay. Like I'm Brendan Rogers, the ex Liverpool manager. If you don't know who that is, then it was a bad impression anyway. Um, so, on with the next one. Continue with the Lowland thing and continue with the brain thing for tonight. Thanks for the input, Harley. Um, so, I was very fortunate to uh, meet up with my good friends, uh, Eddie Ladlow and John, John Clark, Joe Clark. Don't know who John Clark is. He's not a good friend at all. Uh, Joe Clark um, at the Whiskey Lounge. Um, met up at their warehouse, uh, which is not too far away from me in York. Um, I won't give you the address because they've got some very, very interesting things in there and some rather lovely stuff. So, um, yes, if you knew where it was, then... Um, you could certainly go rooting because they've got some phenomenal stuff in there. Um, but um, I was looking for things to tick off my list and they were kind enough to um, let me basically root around uh, and find a few samples to stick into miniature bottles. And one of the things I came out with was this, which might look like a Jack Daniels miniature and actually is because I cleaned it out and um, washed it and, and put this in, which is Cameron Brig. Um, so Cameron Brig from the Cameron Bridge Distillery. And if you watch my Hay Club review, which most people seem to have done that are watching these videos, um, Hay Club is where, Cam uh, Cameron Brig is where Hay Club is made. But if you put Hay Club into the, uh, into Google, into the Google, um, Google Maps comes up with it as Hay Club Distillery rather than Cameron Bridge Distillery, which is what it actually is. So it was um, founded by John Haig of the Hague brand in 1824 and um, it was to be used for their blend. It was a bit like Gervin and William Grant. It needed to be a, a, um, uh, an output for the blends that they used. It is now in D'Angelo's hands. It is the um, largest operating grain distillery in Scotland, if not Europe. It's doing an, it does, just does a phenomenal amount of, of whiskey that it does. So this is uh, Cameron Brig, which is their original grain whiskey. Now, when I, and I've not checked this beforehand, so when I was working at the whiskey shop, I am pretty certain that we were selling this for about 18 quid a bottle. So, yeah, it was about 18 quid a bottle. However, when I spoke to um, Joe Clark, he told me that at the whiskey shop particularly, which was where I worked, were selling it for quite a bit more. So I'm just going to do a quick check on how much it is. This is going for Master of Mall, £21.83. So actually, yeah, not too bad. Uh, how much of the whiskey is Shane selling it for? £21.95. So it's gone up a little bit. You would expect that. I was working in the whiskey shop, what, 10 years ago? So yes. So we're looking at, uh, call it 20 quid for this. Um, how much of the whiskey shop is selling it for just out of interest? Do, do, you're taking the piss. Right, apparently the whiskey shop is selling it for 33 quid. Don't buy it from the whiskey shop. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, even Amazon is selling it for 24 quid. 33, right, the whiskey shop are having a laugh there. I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous. Anyway, so, um, also when I was talking about Hay Club, I, th I got the names wrong of the um, guy who um, essentially invented a form of column still, who was a guy called Robert Stein. Now, I thought it was his son-in-law. Somebody in comments on YouTube told me that it was actually John Hayes' uncle rather than his son-in-law, but I've just read somewhere else that it was actually his cousin. He's a relation of John Haig in some form or another. And he came up with this column still that was actually a, um, a version from somebody called uh, Sir something Perrier. Crap, I've just forgotten his first name. Somebody Perrier, but it wasn't French. That was just his surname. Uh, Stein took his idea and basically developed it, but it was a little bit um, unreliable, a little bit awkward, not very efficient, also susceptible to exploding. Um, I thought it was Augustus Coffee. It's not, it's actually, I think, is it, do you pronounce it Aeneas? Coffee, it's like an Irish name, so A E N E A S. Aeneas, Anus, I would hope not. Um, he basically took Stein's design. Now he came across these because he was a uh, coffee was a tax collector for twenty five years. So as part of collecting taxes in terms of alcohol taxes and distillation and everything like that, he knew how these things worked um, and essentially took Stein's design added two pipes, patented it himself, and that was the one that took off. And that's what the design basis everybody uses today for column stills, grain whiskey distillation, all of that malarkey. 
Um, so, I have some hay club left, fortunately. I've got a tiny little bit left, which I kept just in case I did come across some Cameron Brick. And fortunately, the guys at the Whiskey Lounge had some. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try Cameron Brig on its own. And then I've got my separate little glass here, which okay, isn't a Glencairn glass, but is as close as I'm gonna get rather than putting it in a pint glass to do a direct comparison. Because as we know, Hay Club is going for 45 quid. Oh, an announcement. There's gonna be a new Hay Club coming out. Beckham's Hague, I think it's called. Can't wait for that one. Really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm imagining it's going to be absolutely fantastic, full of flavor and really good value for money. Yes, yes it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a direct comparison with Cameron Brig, which is half the price, even with the price increase, unless you buy it from the whiskey shop. Um, and it's made at the same place, kind of with the same stuff. So, let's see what Cameron Brig's like. Because like I say, when I was working at the whiskey shop, I used to really enjoy selling this because for 18 quid, people were coming up and asking for blended whiskies and things like that. Um, and it was like, actually, why don't you try this? You know, you're not, you're not gonna find this everywhere. And it's unusual, it's a single grain, rather than a blended whiskey, which is grain and malt, and it's not, you're not gonna get a single malt for 20 quid, or under 20 quid, let's face it. So, you know, why don't you try this? We used to sell loads of it. So, I'll do a straight comparison just in terms of the color, because I have got enough to do with the Hague Club. So there's your Hague Club, whether you can put that up, and then, my hand's in the way, sorry. I really don't, I'm gonna drop it on the floor, aren't I? There's your hate club. So you might be able to see that there is a, it's quite a distinct color difference between the two, whether you can actually see that or not. Now it's entirely possible that this has just had more coloring than that's added in. But to be honest, that looks more appetizing, which is probably why they're putting the color on it. So, Now, having just had the black barrel, which was quite sharp, but very, very juicy, and like black currants and black blackberries, this is a bit softer. It's still got a bit of a juiciness to it, but it's not quite as intense, and it's not quite, it's not as brambly as, as the black barrel was just before now. But there is a nice juiciness to it. It's a little bit more metallic. It's a little bit more coppery. It's not entirely unpleasant though, it's just a bit more edginess on the nose and it's a little bit rougher. Not rougher, rougher's kind of giving it a disservice. It would, it would put more people off that didn't like that type than the Black Barrel would. And it's a little bit lighter as well. There's a little floral element in there though. Nice mouthfeel. It's not quite as rich as Black Barrel was. I'm not, I'm apolo I apologize in advance for constantly referring to that, but because I have literally just had the black barrel like five minutes ago, it's gonna be easier for me to kind of compare to that. So go back and look at the black barrel if you've not watched it, and then come back to this one. This is, it's lighter, it's slightly thinner, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not quite as rich, it's not quite as juicy, but it's still very, very easy to drink. There's a soft sweetness to it. There is a slight floral element. There is a bit of juiciness to it, but it's not quite as candy juicy. It's not quite an opal fruits or a Skittles or a Starburst or, it's not quite as sweetified as that black barrel was. It's very pleasant to drink. It's very easy to drink. It goes down a treat. The finish isn't that long. There's a little bit of kind of hay in there as well. But all in all, it's a decent whiskey. It's not gonna knock your socks off and it's not gonna make your head explode with orgasmic joy, but it's, it's a decent, easy drinking whiskey. This will go in cocktails if you want to put them in cocktails, but if you want the whiskey to drink neat on its own, nothing wrong with that at all. 40%, just let me check, yes, 40%. For about 20 quid, you can't go wrong with this. You really can't. Now, I've got a tiny little bit left. I've got some water, fortunately. So let me just... Now, hate club.
there's actually more in this glass of water on the nose than there is in this high club. I know it's quite a wide rim glass, but there's very little there. There really is very, very little on the nose. There's bags more on here, bags more on the nose. There's a bit more fire, there's a bit more alcohol on there. But there's juiciness, there's some black currant, there's some blackberry. Yep. Nothing, nothing there. And there's arguably, there's more hay club in this glass than there is Cameron Brigham here. Forgotten that I'd forgotten how empty that was. There's more flavour in that glass of water. I mean, it's Yorkshire tap water, so there could be any old shite in there, but it's soft. It's got sweetness to it. There's depth, there's richness. There's a bit of a metallic edge, which might put some people off. I'm gonna have to sw Last bit of hay club. It's an alcoholic drink. There is nothing, nothing in it. And this, this makes that, that take the piss even more. Because this is made at the same place, exactly the same distillery, quite possibly with the same ingredients in the same way. And it's over half the price under half the price it's under half the price over it's over 50 percent less that that's what i meant 22 quid 20 quid if you can find it somewhere 45 quid two bottles of that two bottles of that for one of those and a five left over to get yourself a pint or two pints because if you live in yorkshire not if you live in london that will probably get you half a pint of fiver That is absolutely ridiculous. It's a joke, it's beyond a joke. It's everything that's wrong with some parts of the whiskey industry in that it's about packaging and um, style and fashion and famous people and marketing and just utter, utter bullshit and it's not about what's inside the bottle. It annoys me even more now because I wanted, I was hoping that it was gonna taste exactly the same. I was hoping that it was gonna be at least comparable to it to be able to say, well, okay, yes, Cameron Briggs half the price, but it doesn't look as good. It's not quite as fancy, but the whiskey itself is, is okay. I wanted to give Hay Club a second chance to be able to go, right, it does actually taste the same as Cameron Brig, and I like Cameron Brig, so okay, I can't really argue. There's nothing, that's side by side. You've just seen me drink one after the other. So, like I say, there is more flavour and aroma in this glass of tap water than there was in that Hay Club. It's just that with a bit of alcohol added in, and I could sell that for 60 quid if I put it into a fancy black bottle that looks like perfume. Ridiculous, utterly, utterly ridiculous. Get Cameron Brig for 20 quid. Get two bottles of Cameron Brig for 20 quid. Get yourself a fiver to get the taxi home and you'll, you're fine, you're absolutely sorted. Or spend 45 quid on one bottle where you can look cool in front of your mates. But if your mates are proper whiskey drinkers, they're gonna take the piss out of you. It's, it's annoying, it's really, really annoying and frustrating. But I make no apologies if you're watching from Hay Club. You, you've got to, you, what do you care? You're making millions probably because there are loads of people buying it. I've found it in Costco, by, you know, there's, there's tons of the stuff and there's people putting it in the trolleys because they think it looks nice or they're going to give it away as a present. You know what you're doing. doesn't matter what I say. You're still going to sell bucket loads of it. 
none of the people that are going to buy Hey Club are going to be watching this video. So I'm just shouting into the void. There you go. Anyway, it was interesting. It was good to have Joe and Eddie at the Whiskey Lounge. Cheers very much for letting me uh, nab a load of samples. If you've not um, encountered the guys at the Whiskey Lounge before, you should have done because they're absolutely fantastic. They do brilliant events. I think as I speak, they're in the middle of doing a Aberdeen Whiskey Festival uh, this weekend. Um, but they've got whiskey festivals going up and down the country throughout the year. Um, I'll hopefully be getting to a couple of them, so I might see you there. Uh, go to thewhiskeylounge.com and uh, check them out. Check out their events. Go to them. Go and meet the fantastic people there. And uh, that's me done. I've rabbited on. I thought it might have been a long one as well. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.